Welcome to Hayes State Prison, your new home for a year, a decade, or the rest of your life. It's a world of hard-won respect and sometimes violent retribution. To survive here, you have to make a choice. How will you do your time? If you give in, you're going to become a target. The last view an inmate gets to see of the world outside prison is usually on the bus. Today, Stephen Crane and 18 other inmates are being transferred to one of the hardest facilities in the state of Georgia, Hayes State Prison. For all of them, it is another proving ground. One at a time. I'm definitely anxious to get where I'm going and see what it's like. You need to be expected for anything when you get there, you know, I mean, it's just, you don't really know what to anticipate. Let me know that you're here so I can verify if you're black or white. Every camp you go to, you'll have to prove yourself. Stephen Crane. Here. When a situation comes up and, you know, if it comes time for you to have to take uh, a stand for yourself, you have to show that you don't have fear to do that. You step on the footprints, face this way. You're going to be tested. Might not be daily, might not be weekly, but, but you will be tested. It's not just inmates who will have to prove themselves as they learn the ropes in a new facility. It is officers, too. Ulgen Tracy is a new Jack, a corrections officer, level one, starting his first day on the job at Hayes. You know, back that way, you know, that's my, that's my home, that's my house. This way is their house, so I'm going into their neck of the woods now, so you sort of got to get your mind right. I got to uh, start thinking like an inmate. I got to bring my guard up, you know. At 23 years old, Tracy is already a war veteran from Iraq. But this will be a new kind of front line. I always feel like something's about to happen, and it's weird. I feel it's like the air's getting sucked out of the place because there's so much tension in that place. Tracy and Crane are entering a place where the tests will come daily. And right at this moment, the tensions are especially high. First, I want to start off by welcoming the uh, new officers to the uh, shift today. Over the last day or so, we've had several incidents to happen, specifically uh, Thursday, when uh, there was an assault on staff down in D1 on several staff members. The day before was what officers call a bad day at the office. It happened in cell house D1. During a routine count, inmates ambushed an officer and knocked him unconscious. A melee ensued, and another officer was attacked as other inmates joined in. It was over in less than a minute, and although no one knows for sure why it happened, there are already rumors. The officers had been too hard on the inmates. This was revenge. It's a bitter reminder that the system's efforts to control violence at Hayes can make its officers targets. So uh, by and large, uh, uh, we live to fight and work another day. You just got to be ready to react to it. If you, if you get scared and pitch past something, you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble because they're going to eat you a lot. They're going to beat the crap out of you. Inmates, though, see it differently. Those officers needed to be taught a lesson. Everyone does, sooner or later. Hayes State Prison is a place where tough lessons get taught every day. It is part of learning the ropes, part of setting the hierarchies of the world here. In the past year, there have been almost 80 assaults between inmates. Three involves a weapon. It is one of the toughest prisons in Georgia to do your time. A place the inmates still call the chain gang. People do get killed in here and raped in here and robbed in here. And so, no, that's not fake in the movies. Look at the mountains around you and it's all beautiful and all that. And then you, you got Hayes State Prison. This is hell. You in the chain gang. You either gonna do hard time and you gonna do smooth time. Stay behind the yellow line at all times. Stephen Crane will soon have to learn his way through here. 
and face the hurdles that come with entering a new prison. The process just starts all over anywhere you go, you know? I mean, it's just a, it's a part of transferring. It is the latest chapter in a life that turned on a single day. First time in prison. Definitely was not part of a plan. While driving down Highway 316 in Dacula, Georgia, Crane caught a glimpse of a familiar car in his rearview mirror. A high-speed chase ensued that ended here. Crane claims he and the victim were players in a drug deal gone wrong, that the victim had tried to rob him once. This would be the end to a week of escalating threats. I had a gun. It was, it was legally registered and everything like that. He chased me down in traffic and blocked me in, and I shot him through the window. Crane fired once at close range, killing the man. For his crime, he received a 15-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter. Now, almost five years into his time, Crane has landed at Hayes. Crane! His first tear, though, is still a ways off. In the overcrowded prison, Crane will spend his first weeks in isolation, waiting for a bed to open up in general population. It's more time to contemplate what lies ahead, but one step closer to getting a contact visit with his family for the first time since getting locked up. It's been four and a half years since, since I've had a real contact visit with my family. I'm just really looking forward to getting a hold of my dad and letting him know where I'm at, trying to set up a visitation. That's the number one thing to me right now, is getting that set up. I mean, that, that means everything to me right now. Elgin Tracy, by contrast, gets thrown right into the middle of a tear in the first hours of his job. He gets an assignment in cell house C. With the officer beating still fresh in everyone's mind, all eyes are on the new Jack. You can feel it. The inmates are watching us right now. They watch us from day one. You know, how we walk, how we talk, how we present ourselves. That's why I hold my head high. I don't look now when I walk. I'm sure of myself, I walk, I walk proud, you know? It's day one of a career that can be an endless routine. Nine counts each shift, checking inmates in and out of the dorm. And at Hayes, at least three shakedowns per day. Onions and a bunch of toothpaste and a razor blade. This right here is we call it fishing line. String, it ain't nothing but a blanket. We'll make more of it. <laughs> it is an often tedious grind and can create a false sense of security. Tracy's nearest help is in command, three locked doors away. Just got to make sure you really stay on your toes and you've got to watch everything that you do and make sure you don't screw it up because the screw up here is actually pretty dangerous. There ain't no delete button on this. You screw up here, this whole state knows. I got a job to do up here, and if you do your job, they're going to hate you, but they're going to respect you, so I'm not going to let things slide. The officers, they're not ready for what's going to happen. They're not ready. They only told a certain amount to a certain degree in training when they cadets. The, the, to being told something and living and experiencing it is totally different. You have to stand your ground, and once you stand your ground, 98% of the time, they'll back down. And if they don't, Take them to the ground, cuff them up, take them to the hole. You're brand new. You straight out the military two, three years. You don't know nothing. You're still young. And you come in here and, and play hard. No, come in and be yourself. You get more. You give respect, you're going to get it. You don't give it, don't expect it to come back to you. You can expect to get the worst end of it. You're going to pay for everything you say and do. That's life. That's a part of life. I got a temper. That's my tragic flaw is I'm always the first one to throw the first punch, you know? I feel like I always have to stand up and be a man. Well, in a prison, you can't do that. If you show them that you're, that you're going to be strong, they respect you, they leave you alone. And you get mad and you turn around and tell them to shut the hell up, they'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it, and doing it until you snap. And when you snap, they win. You lose. Keep walking. It's all mental. 
Prison is all about tests. Daily challenges that may seem slight, but build your reputation. Whether you are a new officer, a hardened convict, or becoming a man behind bars. We have two birthdays today. One is uh, a fellow born way back in 1990, Rodriguez Dukes. When I've been locked up two and a half years, August would be my third year. I turned 16 at Augusta Regional Youth Detention Center. I turned 17 at Alberta's Correctional Training Center. Thank y'all, thank you, thank you. 18 now, 18. I'm a, a year older and I'm, now I'm considered grown. You know, I'm not, not considered as a juvenile no more. I'm considered as an adult now. His best chance to make it in here may be to learn from someone else who did. For Rodriguez Dukes, that person is Stacy Gardner. <laughs> birthdays and worst days. <laughs> and worst days. I'm 36. I done celebrated 10 of them. Gardner and Dukes are cellies. The old convict and the new kid. It's a chance for Dukes to learn the ropes from someone who's seen and done it all. Five spoon Kool-Aid. And uh, two spoons of coffee. Mm -hmm. And a Coca-Cola. Happy, Happy birthday, dude. Appreciate it, homie. Uh, it made me feel, you know, a little lightheaded a little bit. <laughs> Talk, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it get me a little wild. I get a little wild when I, when I be drinking it. The homemade brew is a rite of passage of sorts for Dukes. But it's a pale stand-in for the life he left behind on the streets. <laughs> Everything to me was a, like a cartoon, it was funny. I ain't believe in nothing. Duke's path to prison started at an early age. By 14, he was already experimenting with drugs and skipping school. At 15, he was taking ecstasy. And in a single weekend, he committed four drug-fueled armed robberies, holding each of his victims at gunpoint. Facing a life sentence, Dukes took a plea. He got 20 years with no chance of parole. He will be 35 years old when he gets out, a year younger than Stacy Gardner, his new mentor. I hate to see a dude been locked up since he been 15 and turn 18 in prison, you know? And uh, forced to be a man when he ain't really a man, you know? He's not, can't really function like a man in this environment around grown men, you know, doubling some triple his age. <sighs> Gardner used to be a lot like Dukes. Now, he just wants to do right and stay focused on what matters. I just take those same qualities that I was uh, applying and use them for, for what's righteous, what's good, what's true. And I try to lead, you know, by example. You know, people are always watching me, I'm always watching everybody. You know, that's just our nation. They see me doing something right, and they want to do something right. They see me being positive, they want to be positive. So if, if I influence them to do negative, I can influence them to do positive and to be positive and be somebody. And to get out of this place, that should be everybody's goal, man, to get the hell out of here. You know, even if, you don't, if, if, it, even if it is a remote chance of getting out of here, it should be everybody fight to get out of here, you know, until you, until you take your last breath. Fight to get out of here any way you can. But before you can get out, you have to learn to live here. And those lessons can be hard. What we had this morning? Every weekday morning at Hayes, Deputy Warden Cedric Taylor sets out for inspection. From a security standpoint, I am the person who's in charge. It is a daily ritual in Georgia's prisons, a cornerstone of the paramilitary system. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday, Collars must be buttoned, shirts tucked in, floors buffed and clean. You can't let the inmates run the prison. If it's one cell that you don't, make sure that this is up to standard. The next day is 10, and then from there it's a whole dormitory. It is a chance for Deputy Warden Taylor to take the temperature at Hayes and to remind the inmates who's in charge. The fact that you know the warden is coming around, you know that uh, someone is going to be coming to look at your business to see what you're doing, right or wrong. And anytime I see anything that is out of place, out of order, 
Let's go look at the lock. That's an opportunity for me to go in, shake down, look, and see what's going on. Hold on a second. Inmates who fail to keep the standards are locked in isolation by the CERT team. Is there anything in your no pockets that's going to set my option? I know that was in there to tell me. You be straight up. You, you lay the expectations out there, and it's up to those inmates, whoever it may be, to make a decision to fall in line with the instruction that we've given, or you can re do the remain of your time in segregation. Despite Taylor's best efforts, maintaining the peace at Hayes can be tenuous. With a hardened population, fights and stabbings can happen at any time. You do have predators. Just like in uh, civilian life, you know, that look to do harm or look to take from you or, you know, whatever it may be. Those guys here, they're here, they're here. Hay State Prison is like the jail within the prison system. High security inmates and those that buck the rigid structure of Georgia's rules end up here. One in five here are serving life. More than half of those charged with murder. It's a tough environment to learn the ropes. Sometimes, though, the system tries to intervene. Gardner and Dukes are cellmates by design. The prison put them together in the hopes that Gardner can show him a better way to do his time. Since I've been his roommate, since I moved in with him, he done taught me a lot of stuff that I needed to know. The average prisoner wouldn't tell a, another person who just coming in a, a hardcore prison like this everything he needed to know to make it. So that was a blessing. For Gardner, it's hard-won wisdom. And I ain't never worked out in my life till I come here. On a summer night in 1998, a man was gunned down in the parking lot of a Savannah sports bar. Gardner was fingered as the shooter. He fled the state soon after, but police tracked him down. Gardner's history of crime resulted in 49 charges and a life sentence. I was a thug. I used to pride myself on being a thug, man. That was the goal I set for myself. I'm going to be the best thug or gangster I could be. And I got all the repercussions in the, in the, in the so-called benefits of being a thug. You know, the women, cars, you know, toting guns, shooting people. I used to get a kick out of that stuff. And it can, it can consume me, as, it, as you see, it's done me. It's the life Dukes once wanted for himself. Now behind bars, Gardner sees two options for the young inmate. Whether to let prison make you worse or make you better. Uh, my name is Rodriguez Dukes. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Augusta, Georgia, and I'm currently locked up for four counts of armed robbery. Twice a week, he and Gardner talk to teenagers headed down the wrong path. Only I seen was my way. My way was the only way, and my way got me 20 years. It is a sort of scared straight program for the teens, but also a time for Gardner to show Dukes a little tough love. Tell them about you, how you survived. Basically, this is my mentor, my roommate. No, I ain't, I ain't not your mentor. I point you in the right direction. And you give me guidance. You, yeah, give me you give me the tools. Guidance. You give me the tools to survive. But I ain't gonna always. I'm not gonna always be here. You know, I might be gone one day. You know, so I'm just trying to get you right. So, you know, so you can fend for yourself, man. So I can take care of me, but you can't take care of yourself, man. You know, and that's why I do what I do. And I just try to just shock him up. You know, shake his head up a little bit to see that you ain't gonna get out, dog. If you don't try to do something about it. If you don't get it now, man, he'll be like some of these other guys, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, still acting like 15 years old. When he gets out, at age 35, Dukes will only have a ninth grade education, unless he completes his GED while at Hayes. Gardner knows school is Dukes' best chance to make a life for himself when he gets out. But Dukes, who pulled fire alarms and sold pot in the halls of his middle school, is struggling to focus now. Prison is full of dangerous distractions, gambling, drugs, and sexual predation. I have a daughter his age and a son, and I messed my life up, in a sense. And uh, for me to come in contact with somebody, you know, his age on a daily basis, you know, it just, it, it just really feel like I'm giving back, you know, to, to society or something by helping them out. And I look at him, I look at him like I'm looking at my son or something. 
sir. Stephen Crane is still in the hole, living with a mixture of hope and fear. I got it. Hope that he gets a contact visit with his parents for the first time in over four years. Shoot, I'm in the hole. Fear that the jailhouse rumors about Hayes might be true. I mean, it's the, it's the, yeah, I, I know. It's, it's the hole. What it is is they don't have enough bed space opened up, so they're just waiting for bed space to open up. I'll be here for a week or two weeks, and then they're going to put me in general population, yeah. They say there's two rough dorms, you know, but, you know, my buddy had told me some crazy stories the night before. He was up here a year ago and said it was real bad. Some crazy stories, you know. Some dude tried to do him. He had to, he had to stick him. But uh, that was a year ago, you know. You got different people saying different things. I mean, it's just going to be what you, what you make of it, you know. I mean, if you're looking for trouble, you can get it. All right, Pop, I love you. I'll see you Sunday. Don't worry about it. It's all right. Don't worry about that. Promise. All right, Pop? All right, I, I love you. special management unit, a place few inmates want to go. It's the hole, the greatest level of control the prison can exert. Inmates here are on lockdown 23 hours a day. It can be used as punishment, as segregation, or simply as a holding cell in an overcrowded prison. Here, time is your enemy. You get only two books and few privileges. In your cell, your only contact with other inmates is by a thread. It's called fishing. Sending out a line made of old shirts or torn sheets, weighted by an object. It is a way to pass a cigarette or note from one cell to the other. Above all, it is a reminder that someone else is out there beyond your cell walls. It's boring. It's definitely boring. This is drag time. Stephen Crane has had one week here, one week to ponder the thoughts that run through every prisoner's mind, how they got here. I'm here because, in my case, because I was in a fearful situation for my life, and I had to stand up for myself. And I ended up taking a guy's life in that situation. That's always in the back of your mind that that could repeat itself, even in prison system. You know, you, you could be trying to defend yourself, and you could end up taking it to that level again. But not defending yourself in prison can have dire consequences. Prison's bad enough, but this is like the prison within a prison. You lock somebody up and they're already locked up. Adrian English is in the hole, too, this time for his own protection. I got beat up on a um, small yard, C2. It was about a basketball game. Some dudes were yelling at me the whole game, talking about some, if we lose the game, if I miss one more shot, he's going to fire off on me. I missed the last shot. It's an almost meaningless incident except that English has a history. There's always going to be things about me that draw attention to me, you know. I've had people spit in my face. I've had people slap me. I've been stabbed. I've been jumped. I've had stuff stolen from me. Pretty much anything and everything that can happen to a person in here, you know. I've probably been through it. English's nightmare in prison began with his crime, one involving his own child. I had a beautiful baby boy, three months old. I was going around making phone calls. 
and I was waiting for somebody to call me back and I was playing with my son and I accidentally dropped him. And when I did, he landed on the back of his head. Um, we had hardwood floors in the house, so he fractured his skull in the back when he landed. And he went into a seizure. When the police arrived, they saw a very different story. English already had two warrants for battery on his record, and the evidence suggested that English had shaken and beaten his son. They arrested me for aggravated battery and cruelty to children, and then when they pulled the plug on my son's life, they upgraded the charges to malice murder, cruelty to children, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, and then they stuck on three more counts of felony murder with each of those charges. Facing the possibility of a capital murder trial, he took a plea and is serving a 20-year sentence. But in prison, crimes against children are the most despised. Even though I didn't do those things that they said I did, you know, it's still a crime involving a child. And then you got a lot of people around here who just don't like things like that, you know. I've had people call me free pick, hypocrite, sissy, child killer. One guy calls me the professor. Another guy calls me XP, which is short for Christmas package. The names seem like something out of high school, but in prison, each one is a label, a brand that opened English up for the worst kind of attacks. It began simply over a CD player. It was involving gangsters, gangbangers, you know? Person was supposed to be a, you know, OG crip. And I had something he wanted. There was a CD player I had and he saw the CD player, and he used to come and listen to it all the time. The CD player was stolen, and when the gang member got put in the hole, Adrian English acquired another dangerous label. And so all of a sudden, you know, I've got my name being dragged through the mud, people thinking I'm a snitch, and that is the worst label to have in prison. You will get killed for being a snitch. I've seen it happen. English wasn't killed, but he says something else happened. Something he refers to simply as it. So they moved me to the cell of another inmate. And he knew what was going on. Push came to shove, worse came to worse. I fought and I fought. And, you know, there's only so much fighting you got to do, you know, but in the end it wasn't enough. and. You know, the man knocked me out, and when I came to, you know, it was pretty much over and done with, you know. The first 24 hours are always the worst, you know, because you're, you're in shock, you're numb. You think about what happened, why it happened. You try to justify it, you try to rationalize it. You blame yourself. You think that there's something wrong with yourself, you know? They always talk about it happening to women out there. They don't really like talking about it happening to men because, you know, we're supposed to be macho, you know? We have a line that just can't be crossed. And that line was crossed with me, you know? Rape is the secret in prison few will talk about. And although the prison launched an investigation, there was not enough evidence to support the charges. In some ways, it's made me bitter. In some ways, it's made me more cynical. In some ways, it's made me angrier. It's definitely wounded and scarred me. Whether it happened or not, Adrian English put himself in a kind of psychological isolation. He hopes this retreat will keep him out of harm's way at Hayes. But in prison, there is no escape. For Stephen Crane, the waiting game is over. You got everything, right? Yeah. 
he's getting out of the hole and entering the general population. That's a good day. Going next door to H2. Crane's dorm assignment is H2, a cell house right on the fringe of the special management unit. Here, you definitely got guys who are going to be here you know, for a long time, if not forever. So this is kind of like their home. They take it serious. From the moment he sets foot in H2, Crane begins establishing his reputation. The challenge ahead is to figure out who will be an ally and who represents a threat. Anybody who doesn't worry about their own safety is real ignorant, you know? You can't just never give in. You know, you give in, you're going to become a target. The only other alternative is you'd be labeled as a free pig, you'd be labeled weak, and that's going to be even worse for you. Crane's approach has helped him survive four and a half years, the time of his journey from arrest to conviction to incarceration. During that time, his family visits have been through a partition until today. Man, I'm excited. Crane. You got any jewelry, her? No. Do I need your ID card? My pass right there. All right. Where? man the things that you take for granted until you don't have them things no more at least i know for me in my life that's what i did like this, this little simple things like just being able to give your, your family your parents your, your your girlfriend or anything a hug like that when you don't have it that's when you really realize how important that is to you don't laugh you don't ever get on the computer do you Boy, good to see you. Definitely a lot longer than we've got to have in a long time, huh? Yeah. We ain't got to visit I think that's that long. the best hug I've ever had in my life. <laughs> For Crane, his parents have been a source of strength and a moral compass. Stacy Gardner tried to be that guy for Rodriguez Dukes, but found he was losing the battle for Dukes' soul. Now he's fed up and moving out. I requested the move. It's just frustrating for me to be in here. And I'm kind of tired of it. Dukes is all here. He won't listen. But I understand he's young, impressionable. I think he knows everything. Slick things I was doing, you know, he always seen them. And, and then I lied to him. And that'll make a man just say, tell me the truth. And I used to steal a lot to him. Dukes has mandates in his mind that, you know, this is how you got to be in the chain game. You got to fight. You got to do this to fit in. And, you know, you got to get them out of your head, man. And you're going to always be in the hole. You're going to always be in isolation. And you're going to always be in fights. You're going to always have problems. It may get rough for them. For the moment, Dukes is taking on another first in his young life, working a job. What would otherwise be an achievement represents a major slide. A job in the kitchen is taking the place of his GED program. He was kicked out for a disruptive behavior. Dukes is now on his own and slipping fast. For Crane, though, getting a job and getting a routine is a good thing. Seven days a week, he helps clean the dorms in H2. I like to stay busy. I can come over here at night if I'm bored and, you know, start doing something. Kind of like how I, I, I occupy my mind, you know, and that way I'm not thinking myself crazy. I got in my routine, you know, I do my work. At night, I work out. Really, when you're doing time, it's no way to do time, but it's how you have to do time. Crane's strategy has been to lay low and stay out of trouble. But in a world full of felons, you can never know who will cross your path. Or for Crane, make a threat. It came in the form of a note 
what inmates call a kite. It ended up in the hands of Sergeant Danny Pierce, a member of Hayes' emergency response team. The inmate that wrote this letter here uh, starts out, uh, now I've been in this dorm for a while. I need for you to move Stephen Crane up out of this dorm because he killed my cousin. The only reason I haven't put the tool in the man is because of my people. Whenever they, they put tool and stuff in a letter like that, they're talking about a shank or a weapon that they were gonna stab him. It's a threat against Crane's life. The note was unsigned, and although Pierce could find no family link to Crane's victim at Hayes, the threat was taken seriously enough that Crane was offered protective custody. He declined. It's a signal to everyone that Crane will not back down. But will the threat become real? And that's just the dealings, especially in a closed security camp. You know, I mean, you, you can't be afraid of all those type of things. When the time comes, you got to do what you got to do. Hayes State Prison, Special Management Unit, the SMU, home to Adrian English. English has faced his test at Hayes and landed in isolation for his own protection. With nothing but time, he pours his private thoughts into comics, both personal and fanciful, creating a record of his experience in prison. I draw, I write, that peace of mind to sit there and be able to be calm when the whole world's going to hell around you. Because a lot of times that's what it is in, in the dorms. You know, yes, I'm afraid, and no, I'm not afraid to fight back. Um, the reason I would say that I'm afraid is because I'm afraid of, you know, being hurt, being hurt worse. I don't feel safe in this environment. Prison, by the definition of what it is, it can't be safe. Because if prison was safe, then we wouldn't need to be here. I look at it like this. The worst thing that could have ever happened to me was to watch my son go through what he went through and then him end up in a grave somewhere. After that, everything else is small potatoes, you know? Sure, I've been raped twice. Sure, I've been stabbed three times. But my son's dead, you know? English has an uncertain road ahead of him. He may get out of the SMU, only to go right back in. There may be no right answer for how to best serve his time, or how to protect him here at Hayes. For now, he's just writing, drawing, and waiting. Rodriguez Dukes has faced a test of his own. His response landed him in the hole. Just two days after Gardner moved out of C1, Dukes failed to follow an officer's instructions after falling asleep at his kitchen job. It's a decision that has made it clear. To the prison, Dukes is on his way to hard time and becoming a convict. Once the separation took place from Dukes and Gardner, Dukes has basically did a downward spiral. I mean, he doesn't dress the same. Uh, he's trying to fit in with the uh, with the gangbang, becoming more and more negative every day. It's up to that individual to make the decision to stand on his own two feet. And the one thing that Dukes has proven right now is that he can't stand on his own two feet. Just two months ago, I was doing good. And, uh, Started acting up, started hanging out the wrong people, and just that fast I slipped, just that quick. Wind up in the kitchen, got put out of school. Everything started going down here. Now I'm back home just thinking, well, what do I want to go to when I get out? The different environment, how I'm about to change, the things I was doing, the way I was acting, all that. 
the different type of people I'm gonna be around, and just the whole atmosphere. Dukes will sit here and wait, thinking about his future at Hayes. A future he will be facing alone. Good behavior and towing the line paid off for Stacy Gardner. He secured a transfer to a facility in Macon, Georgia, closer to his family in Savannah. He leaves only with the accumulated goods of being a respected inmate. In a world without hard currency, cakes, cookies, shampoo, and lotion represent financial security. That's collateral. In case hard times hit, I can always sell some of it, trade some of it. Dukes, he, uh, love road dog. I don't even get a chance to holler at him and tell him I'm gone. Probably won't ever see him again. I gave him my best. I mean, it's over with. I'm, I'm gone. This is it. Well, I hope I left some good stuff in his mind. You know, hope I made a difference in his life. Hope he, hope he can, uh, muster up the strength and the wisdom and the energy. Just do the right thing and don't fall to the wayside. Hopefully everything will work out for him. Across camp, Elgin Tracy is now working the night shift at Hayes. His 40 minute commute gives him time enough to wonder what the evening has in store. Shirt on. Please shirt on. Hey, please shirt on. Tracy's aggressive style has given him a bad reputation among the inmates. And on Fridays, when inmates break the rules with homemade alcohol and gambling, the mood is confrontational. You say that's an LOP. It is LOP. Show, the, show me that an LOP. I don't need to show you. It is. I'm probably one of the most hated officers, you know, because I do my job and I ain't, I ain't scared to do it. What you not say anything on the table. Man, like you gotta come out Thursday and You know, tell them to remove the sheet from the table. They got mad, so what? They did it. When they get out of line, you know, that's when you have to drop the hammer. You know, you can't back down. You can't ever back down. Tracy had a wrong demeanor from the start. He want to play the hard role. He want to play the tough guy. It's not going to happen. He going to be broke down. Every guy, every inmate, every company, they ain't going to buy it. They ain't going to buy it, you know, and they, 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 they going to make him pay for it. You're in a prison. These guys got life without what they got to lose. I can lose everything. But when you come in here, you sort of got to act like a man with nothing to lose. And that keep you alive, in my opinion. It is the mental challenges that make the job of a corrections officer one of the toughest around. One third don't make it past their first year. Just three months after he began, Tracy stops showing up for his shift. Another casualty of the Hayes State chain gang. Rodriguez Dukes is out of the SMU and into one of the toughest dorms at Hayes, D2. He is now fully involved in the gambling and prison politics he had a chance to steer clear of. And Stephen Crane, he's waiting but also reconsidering his tactics. He's put in for a transfer. Crane learned another lesson about the ropes here at Hayes. If you can't beat them, get out. Crane may be leaving just in time. Stay right here and face the wall for me. Stay right here and face the wall for me. Hayes State is in transition, and the tests here are getting rougher. New inmates are transferring in from aging prisons that are closing down. Many are lifelong convicts with nothing to lose. Keeping control at Hayes is getting that much harder.